welcome you to Valley View Baptist Church and we welcome all of our YouTube friends to, to the service as, as well. And uh, <clears throat> as always, we're speaking about our exceeding abundantly able God, text from Ephesians 3, 20 and 21. As always, we must remember that faith defeats fear. Faith defeats stress. Faith defeats anxiety. Faith defeats discouragement. Faith defeats depression. Yes, God is still on his throne. Yes, God is still in the miracle business. And yes, God is still all-knowing, all-powerful, everywhere present at the same, the same time. And Pat, thank you for being a uh, lay leader this morning. We appreciate those, uh, those comments. And I, I, I never heard of Ogden, Utah until I got my papers in, in uh, from Okinawa when I was in the Air Force that I was gonna be assigned to Hill Air Force Base, Ogden, Utah. So I didn't know even Utah existed to tell you the truth. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, let's just look to the Lord. Heavenly Father, as we come now to present your word, pray that it go forth in the power of the Spirit, be received in that same power. We just ask, Heavenly Father, you take full charge of the service now. Speak through me, Lord, let the words be your words for each one of us at this time. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, I have one, actually I have two thoughts that I would like to share with you before we get into the message. And this is entitled, His Songs in the Night. And it's uh, written by E. Margaret Clarkson. And as we look at the weather here, it's rather appropriate. It yeah. says, no night is so stormy, no journey so long, no road is so rugged, but God gives his song. Through earth's deepest darkness shines faith, faith's golden light. God gives to his children his songs in the night. In the night of earth's evil, the woe of earth's wrong, amidst the world's weary warfare, he gives us his song. In the night of earth's sorrow, when <clears throat> rears dim the sight, God gives to his children his songs in the night. And when in the morning in glorious praise, our songs to our Savior in triumph we raise, we'll sing through the ages of endless delight the songs that he taught us, his songs in the night. Pretty awesome something to, to uh, think about. This is a, a poem that was written by Esther Hines. It's entitled, The Case of My Missing Sins. Before the court of law I stood in fear with bated breath. Truth said, she or I must die. The wages of sin is death. Then righteousness looked down on me and said, send her away. I hate all wrong and cannot look upon her sins this day. Then one came forth and spoke for me. Before this case begins, I, her barrister, wish to see some evidence of sins. There was confusion then in court and many looked around. My lawyer smiled, for well he knew my sins could not be found. In the sea of God's forgiveness, buried deep were they. It all involved a hill, a cross, the price God's Son would pay. God knew when Christ died and arose, sin's hold on man's would cease. And thus did mercy meet with truth, 
and righteousness kissed peace. You know, we don't have to stand before a judge for our salvation. We stand before the judge at the judgment seat of Christ to receive rewards for what we've done for and with Christ since we met Christ and so. But the other, the judgment of the great white throne, that's, that's where they're not redeemed. They, they refuse the mark of the beast. So my message today, folks, is the blessing of the great shepherd. Sometimes, some time ago, we, uh, we studied the names of God in our Wednesday night Bible study. We studied Yahweh, Rohi, the Lord, my shepherd. To me, the name particularly touched my heart. So I want to share the message, the blessing of the great shepherd. There's other titles that I could have chosen, but right there in our text, he's identified as the great, the great shepherd. And so uh, I want to talk a little about the blessings of the great shepherd. So, yes, <clears throat> our text is a rich treasury of some of the spiritual truths that are found in the Hebrew epistle. Truths that can make a difference in our personal lives and in local congregations. The benediction brings together several important elements of the Christian life and applied them to our personal needs and obligation. So with that in mind, I just want to uh, share a few thoughts from some of the names and some of the activities of our great, great shepherd. Well, the Father is called the God of peace and the Son is called our Lord Jesus and they work together. The benediction affirms that there is no conflict between the Father and the Son or between Moses and Jesus. The same God who sent his Son also gave Moses the law and Jesus affirmed that he came to fulfill the law and not to destroy it. That is in Matthew 5, 17 through, through 20. Law and grace are not enemies, but partners in the service of God and his people. Law reveals, folks, the depth of our depravity and the awesome holiness of God, while grace offers us forgiveness of sin and reconcil reconciliation with God. If you believe Moses, you would believe me, said Jesus, for he wrote about me in John 5, 46. Well, what is, what is the eternal covenant or uh, everlasting covenant? It's the covenant that was made, folks, before the foundation of the world by the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit to work together to save lost sinners. This covenant is intrinsically involved with the new covenant that Jesus established in his blood, the better covenant of Hebrews 7.22, and the covenant for which we give thanks when we celebrate the Lord's Supper. Well, the Father agreed to call a people and give them to his son. And John 17 and in Acts 15, the son agreed to die for the salvation of sinners and satisfy the justice and holiness of God. And we read that in Revelation 13, eight. 
He would die for the church, John 10, 11, and Ephesians 5, 25 and 27. He would die for Israel, we read in Isaiah 53, 8, and for the sins of the world in John 3, 16. All believers make this truth personal and say with Paul that the Son of God loved me and gave himself for me, Galatians 2, 20. One of my early verses that I, that I uh, uh, memorized, I'm crucified with Christ, but not that of myself, okay? I am crucified with Christ. And so, <clears throat> The Spirit's gift of faith in Jesus, Acts, 7, uh, Acts 11, 17, brings eternal life to all who would believe. Now, can't we learn and see more and more of the great shepherd? That's just, he's unbelievable, the great shepherd. The blessings, I've just shared with you several of the blessings that comes by knowing Jesus Christ. The poem that I read reflects the, the gift and the blessing of Jesus Christ for paid our sins that we can be eternally in his presence. Isn't that awesome? You know, folks, when you accept Christ, the Holy Spirit seals you to him. And nothing, nothing can separate that relationship. It's pretty, pretty awesome to think about. A blessing, indescribable, is it not? Totally indescribable. I'm sitting here kind of stumbling for, for words to express my, my heart for my, for my, for my Lord. So, uh, so we'll find this cooperative work of the Blessed Trinity described in Ephesians 1, 3, 14, and 1 Peter 1, 1, and, and 2. Well, there's a, kind of a thought that I had as I was uh, preparing this message and just, you know, we just finished celebrating uh, Christmas. And uh, I, I want to talk to you just for a few minutes about three, three empty things. Think about it and think about the great, the great shepherd. I've written in small words here Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. So what is empty? The cradle. The cradle is, is empty. Well, and he said, I have to be about my father's business. Faithful then is an empty tomb. Also, what is empty is the old rugged cross. So we have these three items that can really put us kind of in tune with Jesus and the blessings of the great shepherd. There was I'm just thinking out loud now. I think maybe there was four empties instead of three. You think for a moment? Well, there was emptiness in heaven when Jesus was born. And then there was emptiness in the cradle as he grew up. And there was emptiness on the cross 
when he died for our sin. And there was emptiness in the sepulcher where Jesus was buried. So where is he? These empty things that I've shared with you was just the result of God's amazing grace. Okay? Uh, I'm back to Galatians. I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. I've just had a blank, I'm sorry. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. That's a verse to our very hearts as it relates to the blessings of the great shepherd. You see, it's awesome when you consider that the son offered himself on the cross, willingly dying for the sins of the world. Some people resent a series, a religion of blood and oppose it. But the word blood is used 21 times in the Hebrew epistle. Why? Because the shedding of blood, there is, without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness. Hebrews 9, 22. The God of peace made peace through Christ's blood. Shed on the cross, we can read in Colossians 1.20 and 5.1. 5, 5, and that was the only way peace could have been achieved. And so Jesus also suffered outside the city gate to make the people holy through his own blood. Hebrews 13.12. Uh, if the religious people who reject the blood of Christ did make it to heaven, they would be miserable because the slain lamb is the center of attraction and the inhabitants of heaven sing about his blood. And that's foretold to us in Revelations 5, 6, 6 through 10. Oh, we sing here. We're all gonna have better voices. Uh, uh, up there. Even people will tolerate my voice up in heaven when that, when that comes. <laughs> so, <clears throat> folks, we believe in the empty cross. Empty cross. I remember reading uh, about <clears throat> D.L. Moody. And he had an assistant. Uh, and the assistant, when he preached, he left Jesus on the cross and he dismissed him from his part of his ministry because he's not on the cross. Amen. Where is he? He's in heaven making intercession uh, for, uh, for us. So yes, we believe in an empty cross. Jesus is no longer suffering and dying because he has appeared once for all at the end of the ages to do away with sin by the sacrifice of himself. Hebrews 9, 26 uh, through 28. And then see, 7, 27, it is finished, was his triumphant announcement when he completed his work on the cross and for anyone to deny that word is to cheapen the cross and the blood that was shed there. Okay, an empty cross. Kind of think with me now. He was raised from the dead and the cross was empty. And what was he going? to fill. 
He ascended into heaven. He filled the vacancy that happened when he was born on this earth. Isn't that awesome? So, yeah. Some are empty, but one is full. Amen? Amen. Just think about it. Yeah. The cradle is empty, okay? His life is empty. The cross is empty. The grave is empty. But no vacancy in heaven as far as God is concerned with Jesus Christ, okay? He was ascended into heaven and he sits at the right hand of God making intercession for us. You know what, that inter I think about that a lot too. I think he's right there greeting people when they pass from this life if they know Jesus Christ. I think Jesus is there. Let me share a verse. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Now doesn't that tell you where he's at, what he's doing? Oh, it's just, it's just awesome to, to think of what he's done. So, the great shepherd, I mean, indescribable, is it, is it not? So, well, well um, <clears throat> the empty cradle, the empty cross, and the empty tomb, they all go together. The Father kept his covenant promise and raised him from the dead, freeing him from the agony of death because it was impossible for death to keep its hold on him. And we can read that in Acts 2, 24 and Psalm 16, 8 through 11. Christ's resurrection was proof that the Father had accepted his sacrifice and that the work of redemption had been completed. He was delivered over to death for our sins and was raised to life for our justification, Romans 4, 25. The resurrection declares that Jesus is Lord, Acts 2, 36, and that his sacrifice on the cross is the only offering the Father will accept for the remission of sin. There's not going to be any of this, well, I did this or I did that. Very simple question. What did you do with Jesus Christ? Did you accept him or did you reject him? It's that simple. But in the process, look at the blessings from the great, the great uh, shepherd. Well, folks, we don't fight for victory. We fight from victory. You think about that. The victory won for us is by a birth, the suffering, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. In Romans 8, 39, Paul lists the defeated enemies that we no longer need to fear. Life and death, Satan's demonic host, present circumstances, and the unknown future, any powers, anything from height or of death. In fact, anything in all of God's creation, we do not have to fear. Amen. Blessing of the great shepherd, uh, ab absolutely. Wow. The exalted savior says just about the same thing in Revelation 1, 17 and 18. So, in his first epistle, John reminds us that believers have overcome the devil in John 2, 13 and 14. 
overcome the world. Chapter 5, 4 and 5. Overcome the false teachers in John 4, 1 through 4. And in Revelation, John shares Christ's promise to the overcomer in the church in probably 10 verses in, in that. And urges him to follow the Lamb because Jesus is a great overcomer. The cross is empty. The tomb is empty. But God's children share in the fullness of Jesus Christ. Isn't that awesome? So, where, where's he dwelling? Holy Spirit's dwelling in the believer. Isn't that amazing? It tells us in Ephesians that once we accept Christ, we're sealed by the Holy Spirit. No one can touch that. Blessing of the great shepherd, would you not say? Well, uh, I could go on and on about uh, how he protects the flock. But you can read about that in uh, first, first Peter and you can uh, read about the shepherd more in John uh, chapter 10. And I could go on and on. Well, let me just kind of wrap it up with a few thoughts uh, about uh, shepherds. Uh, you know, uh, they, they held a higher esteem in the Old Testament than they did in the New Testament. I think that's why Jesus called himself the great shepherd, shepherd of the flock. And we are the flock. And you know what? I'm honored to be a sheep in the flock, okay? Because that's all God's blessing and his whole uh, purpose. Well, it's too bad that many people think that Psalm 23 is a scripture passage only for funerals because it describes what the exalted high priest or shepherd is doing for his people all the days of their lives. In verse 23, 6, he goes before us, prepares the way. His sheep, true sheep, recognize his voice, the word, and follow him wherever he leads. In John 10, 4 and 5, he protects them and feeds them. He calms their fears when they must go through dark, dangerous valleys. And at the close of the day, he puts them safely in their fold and guards them all through the night. Nothing in life or death need frighten the sheep because their shepherd is in complete control. Okay? We have a awesome shepherd, a great shepherd that is protecting us this very moment if you know Jesus Christ as your, your Savior. So the three work together. You know, the three work together. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy, Holy Spirit. They know a lot about sheep, don't they? And we are under his shepherd power and influence and, and knowledge. Even in heaven, my friends, Jesus Christ will shepherd his people. You say that's not true. Well, read Revelation 7, 17. It's true, okay? Meanwhile, let's follow Peter's counsel. Cast all our care on the good shepherd because he cares for us. Casting all your cares upon him because he careth uh, for, for you. So, well, you remember last week that I, I spoke on our God who blesses and shared, shared how to be blessed under the blood, under the knee, and with a bended knee and open Bible. Some tools are provided for this victory. 
Under the blood is salvation. Under the bended knee is prayer. And the open book is the Bible. Well, let me add the local church, the fellowship, the closing of our text and our message, to whom be glory forever and ever. Yahweh Rohi, the Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my great shepherd. Oh, love him, love him, uh, love him. And so I would just extend to you Greetings from an empty tomb, an empty grave, an empty cradle, an empty cross. But he hung on that cross for you and me. He left heaven, bankrupt heaven, I like to use that phrase, to be born on this earth. So, yeah, there's a few empty things but there's one thing that I want to close with, and that is the fullness of the love of God to you and to me. He loves you. That's what mercy is all about. That's what grace is all about. Uh, that's what redemption is, is all about. That's what the great shepherd is all about. Amen? Amen? And that's going to be what heaven is going to be all about. So don't fear this life. I don't have any fear. I get sick. Most of us get sick. But I'm not poisoned because I still have the blood of Christ that cleanses me and purifies me. So my friends out there in YouTube land, boy, Get right with God. Let him fill your soul with his love and his mercy and his grace. Let him fill your life with his love. Fill your heart with his love. Oh, we talked about empty things, more things that are full. A soul full of the grace of God. A heart full of love for Jesus Christ a mind centered on the person, the power, and the promises of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You want to know him? Just say, Lord, I'm a sinner. Thank you for dying on the cross for me. Come into my heart and forgive me of my sins and be my, my Savior. And he will. He will. So if you're doing that today, What's happening? You're being filled with the blessing of the great shepherd. Isn't that awesome to think about? It's all for your asking. It's all there waiting for the Lord to fill you with his love and his forgiveness. So try it. I think you'll love it. So let's have a word of prayer. Well, Heavenly Father, as we come to the point now where we, we pray. We pray from our heart to people that are listening around the world on YouTube. What are we trying to do? We're trying to help them to find Jesus Christ and experience his forgiveness. And all we have to do is say, Lord, thank you for dying on the cross for me. Forgive me my sins. Come into my heart and be my savior. Oh, the emptiness in one way and a filling in another because you be forgiven of sins and you'll be filled with the Holy Spirit. What an opportunity, what a blessing. So I just pray, pray for each one of you out there. I pray in Jesus' name, amen. So my friends out there in YouTube land, that seems to
finished my message for this morning. The invitation is there. I just encourage you to be a part of it. If you'd love to, we'd love to hear from you. If you make a decision for Christ, we'd like to rejoice with you. Just Valley View Baptist Church, Post Office Box 12653, Ogden, Utah, 844112. And so we'd love to hear from you. God bless you.